Hello, welcome to another Blender tutorial, and today I'm going to be going over how to make an ocean in Blender. I know I've already done one tutorial on in this, but I've learned some things and know how to make it look better and just achieve a better result. And so it's pretty straightforward and easy, so let's get started. So let's just start by deleting the camera and the lamp. And then we can just select our cube and go over here to the modifiers tab and let's choose the ocean modifier so you can see it's pretty low resolution right now so let's go over to the resolution and let's bump that up to I don't know something like 15 you could make it 20 but that's kinda of pushing it for when you're gonna animate it so I'd recommend something around 15 and let's make the choppiness yeah, how about we make the scale up to 2 and I think that'll work Choppiness, we'll probably leave it 1. Choppiness basically makes it the sharpness of the crimp of the top of the waves. And so you don't want to set that too high, otherwise you get that weird effect and you never want that. Basically, the higher you set the scale, the more you the choppiness comes into effect. So let's say I put the scale up to 5, I'd have to turn that choppiness down to like 0.5 to get a good looking result. So I'm going to put the choppiness up to 1 and the scale to 2. And now I think we're ready to animate it. You can set a random seed. And I'm just, I'm just going to stick with the zero seed. Okay, so I think we're ready to start animating it. And so let's go make sure that we're at the front of our timeline. Turn on automatic keyframing. And hover your uh, cursor over time and hit I. And that basically just sets a keyframe. Let's set that to zero. And now let's go to frame 250 and set the time, I don't know, something like, well, let's set it to 10. And since automatic keyframe is on, it already automatically sets keyframe. So now if we play it back, it will play the ocean and make it, you know, the mesh move up and down. But you can see how it starts out really slow and ends really slow. And that's going to be nice for certain animation, but not for this. Usually when you just have a certain start and a finish that you want. So let's go to the graph editor really quick, select them, hit V, and choose vector. So you can see now the curves are straight, and so if you go back into the 3D view, if we play it, you can see it's just straightforward. And that's moving at a good speed, I think. So I think we can go ahead and texture this. And one more thing before we move on, another example, you can see at the very top of this wave how it's crimping. If we turned the choppiness up to like 1.5 you can see how we'd get that result so that's one reason you want to keep the choppiness down just in case you ever got one of those results so let's start texturing this guy and so let's go over here to the materials tab and let's call this one ocean now you might have used the just use the default material that's already there and set the intensity at 0.75 and set the specular type to word iso and the slope to 0 0.025 and let's go down here turn on the mirror and make the reflectivity 0 0.25 and let's go into our textures tab and let's call this ocean bump map and let's make that a clouds type and let's go down here under influence turn off color and turn under geometry turn on normal and make that a negative number negative 0.25 it's kind of depending on your lighting but I think that's all I'm gonna do for that for right now and create a new texture and call this one ocean color and let's make the type blend and under colors turn on the color ramp and we're only gonna be using one solid color for this and not a blend so let's just delete the active color right there and let's make the color a deep blue ocean color. Not black, but a deep blue. And set the coordinates to generated. And under influence, make sure, yeah, the color should already be checked on. And I think we're all good. Okay. So let's just take a little test render really quick. But first we have to set up a lamp. So let's set up a sun. Bring that up. And rotate it however you want it and let's go under the sun settings and turn on sky and ray shadow as well you can turn on atmosphere it really doesn't do that much it 
it does add kind of hazy effect and kind of just a more atmospheric thing but I use that more for darker scenes so now that we have that it looks like it's rendering on pretty well I think I like that in fact I think I'll just stay with how the texture has mapped itself on it and yeah so let's uh, right now set up our camera oops how about I save this blender file call it ocean and so let's set up our camera right now Add a camera and over here and so let's under the camera settings I like to set the um, sensor up to instead of 32 I like to make it 57 because 57 is about as close as it is to the normal view 32 is like for a zoom in camera so you can get a more orthographic looking view 10 is even more so and you know the, the higher the number the farther you zoomed out so you know you can make it 200 and it'd be really zoomed out. So I'm going to put that at 57 because that's pretty close to the default. And I'm going to make the clipping the end of it to, let's just say, I don't know, 500 so we can get all of the ocean that we want. And if we rendered it now, we can add a little bit of mist, but that's not going to cover those outer edges of the ocean. So what we can do is go under the modifiers tab and under geometry, repeat X and repeat Y. And basically what that does is is it repeats the ocean along that axis. So if we repeat it along the x-axis twice, you can see it repeats out that way. And if we do it along the y-axis, it'll repeat it out that way. And it will make it slower because it's basically quadrupling your mesh if you do it both ways. So you always want to be careful of that. But in this instance, I'm just going to be rendering out one frame. And if you're going to do an animation, it will take a little bit longer. So angle the, your camera the way you want. And under the world settings, um, let's make the mist. Let's try let's try 75 for a start. And so the depth set to 75. And let's just try rendering that really quick. That's looking pretty good. I think I'm just gonna um, let's see. Let's turn the depth. Uh, let's try 125. And maybe make the start 15. And you can change the height. And what that does is it just kind of puts the mist in a certain area and a certain level in the scene. So if I put that up to like 0.2, you might not notice a whole lot except for that it's kind of hugging the ocean right on the bottom. You can see there, it kind of makes a weird effect, but um, so I'm just going to leave the height at zero. And I think that's it. So you can render that, you can turn the mist on however you want, you can render the animation and it's, you can get some very good looking results. You can change the sun angles, anything you want to do with that. And it's really a lot of fun once you can just get working with these modifiers. Modifiers are really neat in Blender. So thank you for watching this tutorial, and I hope you enjoyed it. And um, hope to catch you in another one. Thanks. Bye.